Hey guys, this is Deacon from 1082J, Ocho Robotics. This is going to be our robot explanation for our mid-season robot. Okay, so first we're going to start off with our intake. First we have a 5.5 watt motor connected to a sprocket. Comes up to another sprocket, is geared up. Then we have, uh, we chose rubber band intake because uh, it's a lot lighter than the flex wheels and we feel like it has a lot more flex. We didn't really need that many rubber bands on it, it worked just fine. Um, and we have our intake sleds here. Uh, we made it out of white dones because we thought it went nice with the pink and this helps us to run up on the goal. Um, here we have our crossbar, which is mounted behind because we didn't really have the need for a crossbar since this is a high strength axle here. And we put the tank up on here just for center of gravity, uh, just because a lot of our weight on our robot was on the back. Um, it's not on the robot right now, but we had rubber bands be going between here and this point, uh, just so that the ball wouldn't sit on the ground. It could sit up into the robot. And we have our ram bar that pushes everything into the goal going across here. It's a high strength axle. So we drill holes in each end and it goes all the way straight through the drive base. Um, yeah, that's the intake. Next thing on this robot I'm gonna show is our drive base. So we had a six motor 450 RPM on 325 inch wheels. Um, we had double stacked in the back and one on the bottom in the center for motors. Um, for crossbars, we had a high strength shaft coming across the back of the bottom. We had a high strength shaft there. And uh, we had a crossbar going across here, fully boxed all the way down through the bottom. We had another crossbar going across right here. And then a ram bar, another high strength shaft going across right there. And so we thought this drive base worked really well because it had the perfect amount of torque and the perfect amount of speed that we wanted uh, to be able to push people around while also being fast. Um, for tracking wheels, we have two floating two floating wheels. Uh, we have one right here for uh, for side tracking and one right here for forward and backwards tracking. Uh, we had great friction on them. Uh, we both just used rotation sensors on them. Some people uh, put race, gear ratios to make them more accurate, but we felt this worked just fine. Um, we had them floating. Uh, there wasn't really a need to have them floating, but we did it anyways just to be sure that it would get the most accurate that we could and always be touching the ground. So we really never had any problems with that. And uh, I almost forgot, we have uh, custom custom cut white dough and sleds. They're double stacked. So as you can see, there's two, two sets of plastic on each side. Um, we tried to use as much plastic on this robot as we could to save weight. We have a screw with spacers going across here. Um, we use plastic screws here just to save weight, but these help us just ride up over the center goal and help us um, uh, cross over the center bar. And we also had sleds on the back just to be able to push uh, tri balls over the center. It was really helpful in doing that. And we also had on our wings, uh, they were also angled like so, so that we can push over center. But it also still allowed us to push in the goal. And it was just at the right angle to be able to do both. Now moving on to another simple part of our robot, we have our wings. Simple non-locking wings. We didn't have the need for uh, locking wings on this robot. We felt like they pushed in just fine without having locking wings. We used to have locking wings in our first robot, but turns out we never needed them. So here we have the piston mounted off of uh, custom Delrin gussets on the side um, and more custom custom Delrin gussets right here and below um, just to help with aesthetics. And it also holds it at the perfect spot that we want it to. And this just, we had the piston with just a little bit of leverage. We have this standoff here that stops it from going all the way in because it gives us the best amount of leverage. So it pushes out just like that. Those are our wings. Moving on to blocker. We had a two piston blocker. Uh, we have one piston mounted here and one piston mounted here. They're in different spots. I don't really like it, but they're in different spots because down here, you can mount this uh, piston off of this C-channel, but on this side, because of hang, there's nowhere to mount that piston. So what we did was we mounted it off of a standoff right there, and it basically has the same exact leverage, and it pulls this back down as well. 
So when they pushed, when they both activated, it would come up like this and it would be pretty tall. I think it's about 30, 31 inches. There's really no reason to have it taller. We used to have a uh, 39 inch blocker, but there was really no reason to have it and strategy was just bowling anyways. So blocker really wasn't as effective as we wanted it to be. We really didn't use this much at all, but nevertheless, it looked pretty cool. Okay, moving on to slapper. We have a 16.5 watt motor slapper. Um, we hot swapped our 5.5 watt motor. It's a little loose right now, but uh, that's just because we just took it to a comp and we didn't use uh, like Loctite screws. Uh, we used a low strength shaft in the bottom of this uh, on the slip gear because there was really no need for a high strength and we already have uh, a decent amount of weight on this robot. We wanted to keep it as light as possible. We did slow motion videos and there was no torsion and no bending of this axle and it worked just fine. There was really no need for another one. Um, so we have this running on a 36 tooth to an 84 tooth gear uh, with an eight tooth slip and it's running at 200 RPM. So this arm runs pretty fast. Um, it comes down just like so and it releases. Uh, we didn't really have a need for uh, for uh, for like flex wheel stoppings right here just because we boxed the inside of these. We boxed the inside of those C-channels and the inside of the C-channel right there with zip ties um, just to save weight. And for setting the tri-ball on the robot, we had this little, uh, this little, we used uh, extra Delrin gussets and some aluminum to set the tri-ball right here. And then for low arc, we would set it in uh, on this rubber band and in between this blocker standoff right here, and it would have a low arc as well. And this worked really well for us. Uh, we ran it at about 50% at our comps, uh, and it still ran at about uh, 2.1 a second. So it was pretty effective. There was no reason to change it. And it also had really decent spread when you used the low arc. Okay, moving on to the last part of this robot. We have uh, our hang. So we just had A tier because we tried B tier on this robot, but our center of gravity was so far back that it was near impossible to get it to balance properly. We have this uh, C channel coming out just like any other robot with pist uh, double acting piston. Don't mind these zip ties. At this last competition, the screw below uh, going into this shaft collar here came out uh, during elims and we had no time to replace it. So we just put a bunch of zip ties on there. Don't mind that. I promise you that's not, not our build quality. And then under the robot, we have L channels just to sit on the center bar. Um, I really helped us just balance a lot better. And our A tier worked insanely well. There was no problems with it. So that's about it for a mid-season robot. Uh, Rebuild's coming soon. Thanks for watching.